gorgeous skies across central and eastern Kentucky as we gear up for a taste of September. I'm Mike Byer in Lexington. Coming up on WKYT News, a man is in the hospital after police say he was robbed and then shot. Also ahead, a look back at the life and legacy of legendary college basketball coach Pat Summit. Hear from UK Hoops coach Matthew Mitchell, who not only coached against her, but also worked with her. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon to you and welcome to WKYT News at 4. Amber Philpott and Jennifer Palumbo reporting. Andrea has the day off. We've got some good news if you are tired of the heat and humidity. We are about to get a break. Here's a live picture of downtown Lexington where it's in the upper 80s right now. But it'll feel different this time tomorrow. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. And Chris, it looks good. Yeah, it looks the part right now, the good stuff out there. And it's going to feel the part as we go through the next couple of days. You were looking at a downtown Lexington. How about Hamburg Pavilion? Notice how green everything is again after the rains we've had over the past few weeks. Big blue sky over top of us. 89 degrees, yet humidity is down there at 39 percent. Front is making its way through the area right now. Winds are coming at us from the northwest, and that is ushering in that cooler air. So it is kind of dry out there now, and we're going to get even drier tonight and through the day tomorrow. Look at the big temperature drop to our northwest, 78 Indianapolis, 69 Chicago, parts of northern Indiana right now into the low 60s, while parts of Kentucky, again, are into the upper 80s. Nothing showing up on your Defender Radar Network. If you're out and about this evening, it is mainly dry with a small threat for a shower, a thunderstorm popping into eastern Kentucky, some patchy fog through 11 o'clock. But overall, we will continue to hang on to fair skies for the better part of the evening. Now, when I come back here in just a few minutes, we will focus on a forecast that has a big cool down coming, but also we'll start to look long range. Ladies, it is 4th of July weekend just around the corner, and I'm tracking storm. Chris, thank you. We are following international breaking news invol involving a terrorist attack in Turkey. A Turkish official says two explosions have rocked Istanbul's Atakurk airport, killing 10 people. The official said two attackers blew themselves up after police fired at them. Turkish media reports the sound of gunfire at the scene. Turkey has suffered several bombings in recent months linked to Kurdish or Islamic State group militants. June is ending on a violent note in Lexington. For the second time this week, police say someone has been robbed and shot by three people in the early morning hours. It happened just before 5 this morning at the Lansdowne Apartments on Malibu Drive. Police say three men approached the victim, robbed him, and then shot him. WKYT's Mike Byer has the latest from the scene in our top story at 4. Neighbors who live along Malibu Drive woke up to a shocking discovery this morning. I never see bloody footprints going down the sidewalk for blocks. It all started when police were called out to the Lansdowne apartment shortly before 5 a.m. When officers arrived on scene, they located a man with a gunshot wound to his leg. Apparently he was a few blocks down the street and was approached by three male blacks, one of whom was armed with a firearm. They took personal electronics from the victim and during the course of the robbery, actually shot him once in the leg. Police say this happened near Woodside Way. They tell us the victim then walked down the street to the apartments where he told police he lives. From there, police say he was taken to UK hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. He did return and talk to people that he knew after, after he was injured. People living along Malibu Drive say their neighborhood is normally quiet with little crime. It's scary because you don't see it on Malibu. It's a very safe neighborhood. A neighborhood that is now on edge as police try to track down the three suspects who they say fled the scene in a black car. In Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Police were not able to get a description of the suspects. At this point, all they know is the three men took off in a black passenger car. Now, police say they're also investigating a possible connection between that shooting and three overnight business robberies. The incidents happened at the Speedway on Euclid, the Speedway on Winchester Road, and the Waffle House on Athens Boonesboro Road. During the second robbery, police say the robbers were aggressive, shoving a gun into a clerk's back. Police found cash and a cell phone outside one of the gas stations. They hope it will help them track down the robbers. I hope to get caught and put them, put them away for, for quite a while. You know, it's getting really ridiculous. You know, just like I said, it's, you know, you can't hardly walk the street anymore like you used to when I was coming up. We will have the latest on the investigation on WKYT News at 5.
Meanwhile, Lexington police are still searching for a killer. They're trying to solve the city's latest murder. Police found 36-year-old Robert Warner shot to death behind the Continental Square apartments off Eastland Parkway Saturday. His family calls him a generous man who didn't know a stranger. They say he could make anyone smile, and he had no enemies. We don't see anyone really just targeting his life like that, you know, because he touched everyone. He's, he's touched everyone. And like I said, I mean, he's truly going to be missed. And I, I can't say anything bad about him. And I don't know no one that really can say anything bad about him. Coming up on WKYT News at 430, we'll tell you how Robert Warner's Motorcycle Club is honoring his memory with a special fundraiser. The winningest coach in Division I college basketball is being remembered this afternoon. Pat Summit, longtime women's coach at the University of Tennessee, died this morning in Knoxville after battling early onset dementia. Rob Bromley is here now with reaction from UK women's basketball coach Matthew Mitchell, who also used to work for Summit. Rob? Well, that's right. She was a pioneer who had a tremendous influence on women's basketball. Pat Summit losing her battle with Alzheimer's disease this morning. She was 64. She never had a losing record in 38 seasons at Tennessee and is the winningest coach in major college basketball, men's or women's. Kentucky's Matthew Mitchell worked under her as a graduate assistant on the court. She said, he said she emphasized defense and rebounding. Off the court, she had time for everybody. It's incredible to watch her uh, interact with people, and it was so inspiring because uh, it takes a lot of energy to be a trailblazer, and that's what she was. I mean, she knew that, that how she acted impacted the entire sport, and she just carried that uh, with tremendous grace and with tremendous uh, commitment to helping women's basketball be successful. Summit won eight national championships and a total of 1,098 games in her terrific career at Tennessee. She will be missed, Rob. Thank you. Pat Summit will be laid to rest in a private service in Middle Tennessee. A public celebration of her life will be held sometime in the future at Thompson Bowling Arena. We are working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4:30. Sam Dick joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Sam. Good afternoon. West Virginia is starting to get a break from all that flooding, and now it's time to deal with the devastation. In areas where water has receded, thousands of homes are unlivable. Twelve members of the Red Cross from Kentucky are in the Mountain State helping people clean up. They're setting up emergency shelters, distributing food, disaster cleanup kits, and providing counseling to flood victims. As the death toll continues to go up, Red Cross staff say they'll stay as long as they need to. We're there for the long haul. Deployments typically last about two weeks, and then we pr provide uh, additional volunteers and, and staff. And we'll have more on how you can donate to the cleanup efforts in West Virginia ahead on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. A special election over expanded alcohol sales is taking place right now in a southern Kentucky city. Back in 2012, Williamsburg voted to allow alcohol sales in restaurants. That measure passed by just 14 votes. And now voters are deciding whether to allow alcohol sales in other stores. Nearby towns, including Corbin and Barberville, have approved alcohol sales in recent years. Polls will be open in Williamsburg until 6 tonight. We'll have an update coming up on the uh, WKYT News at 4.30. Also, we'll continue to follow the bombing attacks in Turkey at the airport in Istanbul as well. That's a look at some of the news in progress. Uh, Amber and Jennifer, back to you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. The Republicans released their findings today on the 2012 terror attacks on Libya that killed four Americans, including Ambassador Chris Stevens. And while Republicans maintain this was not a partisan investigation, Democrats disagree. Diane Gallagher has the latest. A two-year investigation, an 800-plus page report, and still no new bombshells from the Special House Benghazi Committee. While our guys were on the ground, Taking gunfire and mortar attacks, Washington was moving at a snail's pace. The report does include new interviews and recommendations, but no major revelations. No smoking gun, if you will, that directly implicates former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. I wrote the report that I think is centered in the facts. But it does argue that Clinton should have realized the risks. An addendum released by two conservative members of the panel is about Clinton and is critical of her and the Obama administration, blaming the attack on the, quote, tragic failure of leadership. 
And when Secretary Clinton said, what difference does it make? I, we can now, as a result of our work over the last year and a half, tell you exactly what difference it makes. It makes a difference in how you respond to an attack. Democrats on the committee called the report a conspiracy theory on steroids. Clinton herself brushed it off today. So, uh, I'll leave it to others to characterize uh, this uh, report, but I think it's pretty clear uh, it's time to move on. Still, Republican Chairman Trey Gowdy maintains, even with the timing of the release, this has nothing to do with the election. Speaker Boehner nor Speaker Ryan have ever asked me to do anything about 2016 presidential politics. Speaker Boehner asked me to find out what happened to four of our fellow citizens, and I believe that that is what I have done. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. Fans of the restaurant chain Chipotle can cash in on a summer rewards program. That begins today's WKYT Money Watch. Chiptopia is a three month program offering free food after four qualifying visits. The program has three levels mild, medium, and hot. Four minimum of $6 purchases a month gets you one free entree and mild status. Eight purchases get you another entree and medium status. And then 11 gets you another free entree and hot status. But wait, there's even more. If you achieve hot status for all three months, you'll get free catering for $20. The program launches July 1st and runs through September. Facebook wants to help keep people up to date on the events where they live. The social networking site has launched a new feature called Featured Events. Facebook's events currently allow users to discover new events based on what's popular with their friends or through a suggested for you feature that uses algorithms. This new feature provides events selected by Facebook available to all users in an area. More and more Americans are spending part of their time working from home. As Wendy Gillette reports, residential buildings are adding amenities and space to meet the growing need. Once or twice a week, Robert Blake has an enviable work commute from the Brooklyn apartment he rents. He's got to push a button and head down to the 18th floor. Hi, gang. The sales executive uses the business center in his building, City Tower, for meetings away from his office. It was an important factor for me. It, it was a great amenity that this building had. Providing workspace in residential buildings is becoming more common as a growing number of Americans telecommute. A study by GlobalWorkplaceAnalytics.com shows the number of people who regularly work from home grew 100 percent since 2005. That trend extends to some of the most expensive buildings nationwide, including 157, which overlooks Central Park. Residents here at 157 have access to this conference center, which was designed by famed Danish architect Thomas Jewel Hansen. And they can also use any of the amenities and facilities here at the Park Hyatt, which is at the base of the building. Another building still under construction, 50 West, is going a step further, offering condo owners the option of also purchasing a separate office. It's about having a discreet, separate, quiet place that you can work uh, that's not part of your home living situation. We want to start holding. Blake says the arrangement makes him a better focused employee. Wendy Gillette for CBS News, New York. The condos in 157, the building that overlooks Central Park, certainly don't come cheap. The penthouse home broke a New York City record last year, selling for $100 million. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Furniture giant IKEA is recalling millions of its dressers that have been blamed for the deaths of three children. IKEA says the dressers can fall over if they're not fastened to the wall. The company says it's working with the Consumer Product Safety Commission on the recalls and how to deal with the problem. Reports say that will include IKEA giving customers full refunds. IKEA launched a repair program last year for these dressers after the deaths of two children, but the company says it opted to issue a full recall after the death of a third child. Pepsi will soon have three diet drink options. Just one year after ditching aspartame, Pepsi is reintroducing the artificial sweetener. PepsiCo says a new offering will be made with aspartame and Ace K. It'll be called Diet Pepsi Classic Sweetener Blend. The drinks will be in stores in September and sold in 20-ounce and 2-liter bottles along with 12-packs. 
Pepsi initially dumped aspartame over public concerns about the sweetener's health effects. But now it says consumers want choice in diet colas, and it's just adjusting to buyers' tastes. Exercise may do more than just improve young bodies. The British Journal of Sports Medicine says physical activity can boost young people's brain power and academic performance. The statement from a panel of international experts says regular physical activity boosts self-esteem and social relationships, as well as cardiovascular and muscle fitness.